Hi, everyone. Um, this presentation is about using transitions in your writing to help create cohesion. So here we go. What are transitions? They are words or phrases that show the relationships between the ideas in your paper. They help guide the audience through your reasoning and appropriately introduce new ideas and concepts. Let's start by looking at an example from our previous lecture. The transitions are in bold. Our current sources of energy, namely fossil fuels and other non-renewable sources of energy, are a major part of what drives global warming. According to a chart in US Energy Facts Explained, and that's a transition, right, because we're introducing a new idea, petroleum makes up 35% of our energy consumption and natural gas 34%. Only 12% of our energy sources are renewable. You could see that only is also considered a transition because it is again switching between ideas. Petroleum and natural gas are both types of fossil fuel which are made of ancient decomposed animals and plants and are incredibly carbon rich. Clearly, almost all of our energy, which we use for things like heating, cooling, electricity, and transportation comes from these finite sources. But more importantly, when fossil fuels are burned, they release carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, which in turn trap heat in our atmosphere, making the primary contributors to global warming and climate change. So not only will those energy sources expire at some point, they also play a major role in the degradation of our environment. Nunez also points out, non-renewable fuels supply about 80% of the world's energy. Exploring greener sources of energy can make a major positive impact in the health of our environment. And as one of the countries in the world with the highest energy usage, the United States has a responsibility to do so. So you can see that even as I wrote the paragraph naturally, which I did beforehand, I, I kind of naturally incorporated a bunch of transitions. And I think many of you guys do as well. So the purpose of this is to now be conscious of them and add as needed. So let's analyze this um, in particular this example, the transitions accomplish the following. So some of the transitions introduce support. So you could see where it says, according to a chart in the US Energy Facts Explained, and also Nunez points out that it shows us that now we're transitioning into a quotation. Um, so naturally you'll want to add a transition there. The transitions also show contrast. You could see where I wrote only 12% of our energy sources are renewable. The word only shows opposition to the percentages that are non-renewable, right? So it shows contrast between those two. And the word only is the one that signifies the value there. They also add emphasis with reasoning. So you could see where it says clearly almost all of our energy dot, dot, dot. And then, so not only will these energy sources expire at some point, they also play a major role in the degradation of our environment. Those little words and phrases help the audience understand how to read your sentence and with what meaning to give it. And then lastly, the transitions help the audience to signify when you are adding additional information, where it says, more importantly, when fossil fuels are dot, 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 it uses the previous information as a baseline and then adds to it. So those are some of the ways where I've naturally added transitions into this paragraph. Um, and you can see that each one has its own role to play. So let's explore this deeper. Here are some of the most common reasons to add transitions with examples, but there are so, so, so many. So just be prepared that this is not in any way a comprehensive list. Um, so some of the most common reasons to use transitions are to show addition or add a new idea. And you could see that is reflected in words such as additionally, also, not only, but also likewise. Um, to show contrast or change in ideas is another common reason to use transitions. And you could see words like in contrast, contrarily, however, despite. Other reasons include to show literal or figurative placement, where something is, to show time or sequence with words like first, second, third, or next, then last, etc., or to show results, right? If something happens, if you know, there are a bunch of elements coming together. What are the consequences of that? And you can see that in words like clearly, as a result, consequently, due to the fact that. Here's a few more. You can use transitions to show summary or repetition and indicate that you are revisiting something that you've mentioned before in your paper. You can use transitions to add an example or illustration, to strengthen or clarify a point, 
to show comparison or to return to a point. So these are just some reasons. I'm posting these on your resource page and um, other resources as well to get more ideas for transitions. Something that I want to emphasize is that you should be creative with transitions. Those are not the only reasons to use them and those are not your only options. Um, you want to put yourself in your reader's shoes. How can you best express yourself so that your reader has the clearest understanding of your argument? And that might mean um, not using a tra tra traditional, excuse me, transition. It might mean kind of being in, a little bit inventive. Um, there are many places in your writing that transitions belong in and should be used in if, if necessary. And I'm gonna go over some of them. So first, at the start of a paragraph, because it shows how the paragraph relates to the previous one. When introducing your support is a good time to include a transition because that lets the audience know that you're representing the ideas of another author. Um, when explaining your support, because you'll want to be clear about how you're applying your reasoning to your support. At the start of the conclusion, to show that you're closing off your argument and make it clear that this is kind of the end here. And then between relevant sentences. So basically use your judgment. How can you express yourself with the most clarity? Between which sentences do a, does a relationship need to be established? Early in the presentation, we saw an example of how to use transitions within a paragraph. But another way to use them is between paragraphs in your topic sentences. And that's what this part of the presentation is going to focus on. Just as you need to show the relationships between the ideas in your paragraphs, you should also show the relationships between the paragraphs themselves. Here's one way to look at it. If you've removed the entire essay, aside from the thesis statement and the topic sentences, those sentences alone should read together as though they were one cohesive paragraph. So that's the way I kind of test myself and test other students' writing um, to see if their essay is focused and kind of follows through with with a clear thread of logic. So let's kind of apply this to an example. We're going to use a thesis statement and topic sentences from our writing body paragraphs lecture um, and do the exercise that I mentioned on the previous slide. So the thesis statement is, governments should prioritize researching, developing and investing in alternative energy resources because they are vital to slowing the rate of global warming which is causing an irreversible level of damage. The topic sentences read, our current sources of energy, namely fossil fuels and other non-renewable sources of energy are a major part of what drives global warming. Global warming is causing an irreversible level of damage to our environment. Investing in researching and implementing alternative energy resources is a major way we can effectively reduce emissions and begin to repair the damage on our environment. If you read them in succession, it makes sense, but it's not fluid or smooth. So now what we're going to do is think about how we can create that fluidity so the relationship between those sentences is really clear. Um, so what we're going to do is treat these sentences as though they were their own paragraph, adding transitions to make them read more cohesively. So we're starting with the thesis and going through all of the topic sentences. Governments should prioritize researching, developing, and investing in alternative energy resources because they are vital to slowing the rate of global warming, which is causing an irreversible level of damage. Currently, our major sources of energy, fossil fuels and other non-renewable sources, are a major part of what drives global warming. As a consequence, global warming is causing an irreversible level of damage to our environment. In order to reduce our impact, our government must invest in alternative energy so that we can effectively reduce harmful emissions and begin to repair the damage on our environment. You could see that I did a bit of revision to each sentence in order to add the transitions clearly, but that's totally okay. I think if anything, what that does is encourages you to really think about how you're focusing your paragraphs and how you're wording everything so that it's clear, fluid, connected. You'll also want to maintain an awareness of how the previous paragraph ends. We don't have that here in this lecture, but if your paragraphs are in focus and shift ideas, it might be hard to write effective transitions and a sign that you need to refocus your paragraph. So if your paragraph is dealing with too much information, it'll be hard to transition from one paragraph to the next because it's going to flow from idea to idea 
and it's not going to maintain focus. So what you want to do there is probably write another paragraph that bridges the two that don't have that fluidity. But from there, you can redistribute the thesis statement and topic sentences into their correct places at the end of the introduction and at the beginnings of the body paragraphs, respectively. It's a good test to make sure that the overall logic of your essay is clear and to check that each paragraph contains its own clear focus. So here are just a few takeaways here. Um, first of all, you're going to want to remember to use the right transition. Select transitions that accurately express the relationships between your ideas. Um, you'll want to be creative, so use your resources and your imagination to find or create transitions that work for your writing. But you're also going to want to keep it simple. I think I have a lot of problems with this with students. They want to sound too fancy, so don't be sounding like our nation's founding fathers using words like henceforth or hereby or thus. You don't need to use those. Your writing needs to be clear. This is about clarity, not fanciness. Um, you'll want to transition within your paragraphs, so use transition words from sentence to sentence, clearly introducing your quotes, indicating that you're beginning your analysis or adding information among other processes, and also transition between your paragraphs. So you can add transitions to your topic sentences to show how each paragraph proceeds from the previous one. And that is it, friends. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope it was helpful. Um, and that you can look at your own writing, examine your transitions, and add if necessary.